This is exactly how I interviewed Andrew Tate with just over 3,000 subscribers here on YouTube. As you can see, the center photo is me and him on a Zoom call together, and the left photo is the thumbnail of the full video on my YouTube channel. Throughout this video, I'm gonna save you hours of guesswork when it comes to personal branding and break it down into three simple steps here. But a little bit about me, who am I and why should you even listen to me pretty much? Well, I've made over a million dollars in the online space just in the last three years here. And I'm also gonna save you over $60,000 of my own money that I spent when it comes to personal branding and information and networking knowledge. Plus, I'm compiling 18 months of everything that I've learned into this video over the next few minutes here. Just to go and show you even more, there's a cashier's check for a little over 100 grand, my car that I bought when I was 20 years old in cash, and a withdrawal for $137,000, and then myself standing next to my car at the time. So that's a bit more about me. Now, these are some of the people that I've connected with over just the last year alone. I got Nate Belmar, Cardinal Mason, Sebastian Escueda, Sebastian Georgiou, Jordan Bound, and Justin Waller, just to name a few. And I guarantee you know at least one of these guys on this page. So there's nobody in this space as qualified as I am when it comes to personal branding and connecting with the top influencers. So how the fuck did I get a hold of Andrew Tate with 3,000 subscribers? Did I, did, I, did I pay him? Yo, Tate. I'll pay you 10 G's to hop on a Zoom call with me, brother. He probably wouldn't even do that because 10 G's ain't nothing for him. Did I fake the Zoom call? I've been accused of this so many times from people that actually watch this, but they didn't watch the full video. So of course they're going to accuse me because they just saw a clip online. Did I reach out to him directly? Did I DM him on Twitter? Hey, Tate, can I please get you on my channel? Did I get lucky? I actually didn't reach out to anybody to make this happen. No one. I didn't do any outbound. I didn't do any DMing anybody. It actually came to me and fell into my lap because of the power of my network and my personal brand. These are the opportunities that come across when you have a personal brand. And shout out to Niles, by the way, for letting me know the call was going to happen. And who is Niles and how do I know about him? Well, I'll jump into that story in this video. So step one out of the three steps in this video here. You need to support your favorite content creators. This is key number one to how this even started. But the key to this is to not reach out to the influencer or content creator directly. It's way harder to do that. It's way harder to get their attention. And it's also not the best optics. Let me give you an analogy. Would you rather be introduced to a multimillionaire at a party by your friend who knows you and him, and he's going to make that connection for you? Would you rather have that? Or you go walk up to a multimillionaire the guy has no idea who you are. You're probably going to try and qualify yourself so he listens to what you say, which is not a good look. Which option would you rather have? The obvious answer is that you want somebody to introduce you. That's instant social proof and instant credibility. So you get a hold of their team. You get a hold of somebody that helps them and works for them. It's a much easier and it's a better look. This is what I did with Sneeko, Fresh and Fit, and even Justin Waller in the very, very beginning here. And I even went on to film a podcast with Justin Waller, and I'm going to get into that story briefly throughout this video as well and how that happened. So this is the night I met Sneeko. This is the night I met Myron and Fresh for the first time. This is the night I met Justin Waller for the first time. As you can see, I'm wearing the same fits because we were there at a party together. And that is the podcast I actually filmed with Justin Waller that ended up happening over a year later from when I first met him. So this is the story about the Andrew Tate clip here. This is going to be in depth and I'm not really holding anything back through this. So you can really understand how I position myself to do this. This screenshot below goes back to the end of 2022. I was watching Fresh and Fit in the beginning of 2022. I started watching them like March, give or take. And then I kind of supported them for a few months. And I was always showing support in Instagram or on Instagram, opposed to YouTube comment section. Why was I doing that? Well, it's because it's a lot easier to stand out on Instagram opposed to YouTube. If I comment something on somebody's Instagram, I'm going to be able to have all their followers see my comment. They can go check my page and that influencer or content creator can actually click on my page and see an instant portfolio of what my profile looks like. If you try to do this shit on YouTube, you're going to strike out a bunch. Nobody really goes to click on other people's YouTube channels and check out who they are. Like, it's just not common, especially on Instagram. If you're verified, it definitely helps and adds another level of professionalism. So I took advantage of that. I actually wasn't even verified at the time because meta verification wasn't a thing back then. But one day I was at the gym and I still remember this very clearly. I was doing tricep pull downs and I remember my phone vibrating and checking my phone and I see a notification from somebody that looks very familiar. And at the time, it was one of Fresh and Fit's employees reaching out to me. He randomly DM'd me. I didn't even reach out to him. He DM'd me. Why did he DM me? 
out of all the other people that were commenting on Freshman Fitz comments or, or photos and videos on Instagram, why did he pick me? Well, it's because I had the foundation of my personal brand set. This is an exact screenshot of what my page looked like at that time. 1,000 followers, barely that many, barely anything. I was back in New Jersey at the time. I had Florida there because I was going in and out of Florida all the time. I had no call to action or anything. I was just listing shit. My profile wasn't even optimized. But I didn't look like a bot or a loser. You know, I, I was showing off a little bit of my lifestyle, um, some cars, some girl I was hanging out with. Just my life. I didn't come off super arrogant or super cocky in any of my content either. It was just pretty chill, showcasing some stuff. And I just looked approachable. That's why he reached out to me. And this was my edge right here. Having a professional account, not trying to overqualify myself, and also just being chill. And this can also be your edge as long as you follow what I'm about to tell you throughout the rest of this video to grow your personal brand and attract the individuals you want to have throughout your network. So we messaged for about three months prior to him even inviting me to the studio. We connected in around August, or it was July, July of 2022. And then he invited me to the studio in October. That's when we were going back and forth for a bit. And throughout all this time from August, or excuse me, July to October, I didn't ask for shit. I was just so in support. We were just swiping up on each other's stories sometimes, going back and forth a little bit not asking for anything. I was just so in support. So a couple months later, this was what this is where it leads me to October, he actually invites me to the studio. It's a crazy opportunity. And fresh and fit was my number one sort of uh, influencers that I watched at the time. So when I went to Miami this night, and I'm going to show you here in a moment, we went to the club together, we went to get sushi together, Myron and fresh invited me out and two of their friends too. That were actually on the podcast that night. It was Dollar Cross Crypto and Cultivate Crypto. I'm sure if you watch the show, you know who they are. And I was the only guy there that was just like more like the random. <laughs> but we stayed in contact for months after this. And this is one of the texts from one of their old employees. Uh, Eric actually kind of got fired, uh, unfortunately. But this was the night where we got sushi. I was, I was Myron there, there was Fresh, and there's Cultivate Crypto and Dollar Cross Crypto. And then us at the club. They went and got bottle service. And um, as you can see, you saw Fresh Stairs, the girl with the bottle, Myron right there. We were in Vendome in Miami. So if you've ever been there, you know your boy's been there too. Fun time. So about two months after this, I have my camera gone because there's a lot of photos on this page. About two months after that event and that night, crazy limiting beliefs have been removed from that night, first of all, because I was like, shit, I was really just at the studio with these guys. They're super chill. They're like regular guys as well. But this leads me to the fresh and fit 1 million subscriber party. And I know I'm going on with this. This is all relating to the Andrew Tate clip. I promise you stick with me through this video. It's all leading up to it. As you can see on the far right, I was actually on the show uh, on the background. I've been on the show a couple times actually just featured in the background. But basically, this is a yacht party in Miami of 2023. This was two months after I initially met the guys and visited the studio. So this same night, I met Luke Belmar, Nate Belmar, Justin Waller, DDG, Sneeko, Brandon Carter, etc. I met so many people, so many influencers just one night on a yacht. And I kept building rapport and becoming close to Refresh. We just hit it off pretty well. At the time, he had an Aston Martin. At the time, I had an Aston Martin. And we just hit it off pretty well. I made sure to establish myself not as a fan, but to establish myself as somewhat of an equal. Although I don't have a massive social media presence, I still have some monetary success that we can go and... Uh, kind of vibe about. So the experience being on the yacht, meeting all these people this one night removed so many more limiting beliefs opposed to just being at the studio the one night. Now that photo on the top right was me in the studio the night before this party. And it was actually a really fun time. I'm not going to lie. So now February of 2023, this was me meeting Sneeko, of course, like I said, in January of 23. And then in February of 23, we actually filmed the podcast. Posted it in March of 2023. And this right here unlocked a new level of status and awareness for my own personal brand. When you have somebody like Sneeko on a podcast, for the first time, somebody of that of that nature, people are going to be like, whoa, who the hell is this guy? Like, how did he get Sneeko on? At the time, I had less than 200 subscribers. Not even joking. I remember waking up in Miami at the East Hotel. I always stay there. And I checked my phone. I was like, damn, I'm really interviewing Sneeko today with less than 200 subscribers. That's fucked. 
So this was a record month as well uh, for affiliate commissions for Go High Level. That was the offer I was pushing the most of the time. People today that have been paying me for over a year on the high level affiliate program are still using Go High Level to manage their business. Even one of them, Christian, shout out to you, bro. We, we talk pretty often in the Instagram DMs. And now you're actually using Beamly and using it for your own customers with your Go High Level agency. Isn't that crazy how things can snowball with a personal brand here? It's fucked. So then Fresh went on to launch a paid community. I joined it uh, and others as well joined it from the Fresh and Fit community. He would have pretty big people on the calls too. Like Brandon Carter, one of them for an example. Myron would join sometimes talking one-on-one. -on -one. The Rational Male, like um, the Red Pill guy. And a bunch of other people too, like Bam Man Kevo, if you know any of these people. So this essentially created a private access and private vacuum of talking to these people in a closed environment. And this is where I was also able to provide my own value to the group. And this brings me to step number two here. This is how I met Niles in a Telegram chat. See, we're getting somewhere here. This was actually the same night as the one mil party. Uh, about 10 other people from the party were invited to go to the club, me being one of them. I wonder why. I never asked for shit, that's why. I never asked for shit. And that wasn't fucking weird. So the CEO network was a telegram chat. So step number two here, you need to provide value to others in your community or an environment that you're in. You never, ever, ever want to ask for something up front. It's not a good look. It makes you look needy, hungry, or thirsty, and just trying to take, take, take. Nobody likes that sort of energy. Like I said, why do you think I was invited to the, 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 the club after that party? There were over a hundred guys at that fresh and fit yacht party. Why do you think the 10 of them were invited and me being one of them? Because I never asked for shit for these guys. They always showed support. And I was just fun to hang out with. And I had rapport with them. It's a long game. It's a long game when you're building out high-level relationships. So what does it actually mean to provide value? Everything is so generic when people say this shit. So how do you actually do it? You need to identify where someone can benefit from your experience, your expertise, your relationships, or your product or service. These are the three to five different things you can do to provide value in someone's life. Or I've seen people do this. If your vibe is cool and you're fun to be around, this can work as well. You don't even got to be that extravagant. If you're a fun time, I know people personally that can actually pull this off and be around high level people just by being a fun time. However, I recommend focusing on the, uh, the experience relationships and products or services first, because that's going to be the most value you can provide. Right here is a photo of the CEO network down in Miami. There's me on the bottom left, or excuse me, the, the center of the bottom, uh, taking a knee there. Some of these guys have also gone on to do really cool things, not just being with Myron and Fresh, like, you know, that's pretty cool, right? But that's what's also important, is building a relationship and building a friendship with other guys in the network, because we're all like-minded. That's why you want to provide value to other people. So going into more of the personal branding side here before I go into step three, this is important. So don't skip this part of the video. You want to show more of yourself. You don't just want to be another talking head on Instagram that blends in. Like it's just gay. So show your personality and your content. As you can see, I'm pretty fired up and pretty energetic recording this video because I'm passionate about it. Personal branding and networking and connecting with these cool people is something that I really enjoy doing. I really enjoy setting up events, but showing your personality throughout your content will allow the viewer to actually connect with you on a deeper level, opposed to just wanting you for your information. You know, you don't wanna be just a talking head that is strictly only about information. There's hundreds of those people. People don't buy it just on information nowadays. They buy on the person and they buy on the results of that person's life and just their vibe. That's a, re that's a real thing. <clears throat> so this will also give you an edge in personal branding and just life in general. If you're going to be mundane, hey guys, this is how you do this, 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 and uh, make sure to subscribe. Like, bro, no one's going to fucking listen to you if you're talking like that. It's not the way to build a personal brand and not the way to grab attention and get people to actually connect with you. That's why I don't really have a filter that much on YouTube. Uh, I still do, but not as much. So fast forward to February of this year. This is the text that I received from Niles. <laughs> Niles was a, a moderator in the chat as well, by the way. But I actually met Niles eight months prior to February of this year um, in Miami. It was May of 2023, the same day actually, or the same weekend of um, this photo right here where when it was taken. And we hit it off super fast. We're both like-minded, he's chill, he's actually from the UK, and he came over here just for the event, which is super, super cool. 
and it was his first time in Miami. This is why it's important to be a good person either way as well. Because you don't just want to kind of dismiss people, um, whether they have or don't have certain achievements. You want to treat everybody equally. Because at that point, they're going to feel the reciprocation and they're going to feel like, wow, this guy's actually pretty chill. And I actually want to go and vibe with him. He's pretty dope. So this is exactly what he texted me here, as you can see. And this was actually me smoking a cigar with Niles right there on the left in a cigar lounge in Miami. This was the same day uh, or same couple days where I met him for the first time, May of 2023. So instantly when I got that text from Niles, I texted some of my own close friends and I said, hey, I have Andrew Tate perhaps coming on a Zoom call. Do you guys want to join or do you guys want to be here for it? I wanted to share the experience with my friends, pretty much providing them value. Because who the fuck else gets to experience a one-on-one a -on -one sort of like full attention with Andrew Tate uh, for a few minutes? Nobody gets to. Nobody gets to do that. So I was like, all right, let's go share it with my friends. So I went over to my buddy's house and we set up a bunch of cameras in his backyard because I knew this opportunity was going to be really, really cool. Fresh was hosting this in the CEO network. And I wasn't even sure if I was going to be able to ask him a question because it sounded like he was, uh, it sounded like he had to leave soon. But fortunately enough, I was up to bat and I got to talk to him for a moment. This was the camera set up in the backyard here, uh, as you can see from this clip here. So this one clip got over 150,000 views and new impressions and new people were seeing my personal brand and even other big personal brands came across my page because this video hit the explore page. And this brought in dozens and dozens of new leads for my business. And I nurtured new followers to eventually turn into buying customers. So step three in all of this is double down on content and make it better. Learn content frameworks that convert, learn how to write better scripts, learn how to write better hooks to optimize for longer viewer retention and keep people engaged throughout the video. Because you can have the most valuable advice in any of your videos, but if you can't get somebody hooked in the first few seconds or first 30 seconds on YouTube, you are gonna be cooked. Nobody gives a shit these days if you don't have anything valuable to say or at least pique their interest in the first few seconds uh, in a video because they're going to go leave and bounce and go start watching Mr. Beast. So just get better. That's step three. So this one video equals 150,000 views of new people, over 1,000 new followers, over 1,000 shares, and new mutual connections that are high-level people too. And fun fact, this video itself was the moment and reason why I was even able to lock down Justin Waller. My podcast was attracting big names and I was getting more momentum and building more momentum. So I wanted to keep it going. And our podcast with Justin Waller actually went on to get over 64,000 views and nurture even more leads to turn into the customers for my business and for my offer. Here's a video from a little bit over two months ago at this point of me and Justin Waller. And there's the video, uh, you can see all the shares there, you know, 1100 shares with only two, or excuse me, with only 12,000 likes. That's a lot of shares to the like ratio. So after all of this, after all of this, I just went through the entire story. Here's the main, main takeaway. After 18 months of my personal branding experience, after talking to even dozen, multiple dozens of high level people on camera, because I don't post everything that I talk to, or I don't post everybody that I talk to off camera. You're going to be somebody, or you're going to be an absolute nobody. You're going to be the guy that no one gives a shit about, or you're going to be the guy that has all these cool opportunities and gets to do these cool things because of your personal brand, because of who you know. This is the main reality. It's the have nots and the have yachts, as Tate sometimes has even said <clears throat> himself. And in my mind, you have at most two to four years to leverage social media and grow a personal brand uh, and make sure it's a successful personal brand because having a personal brand attracts your ideal customer type instead of paying for attention. You don't pay for attention with a personal brand, you, you, you attract attention to your personal brand because advertising prices will go up. That is guaranteed because the space is gonna become more competitive. So don't procrastinate on this opportunity because this right here will directly impact your network. This will directly impact who you meet, who you come across, who you're actively texting on a day-to-day -day basis and what opportunities come up in your life. And this will also directly impact how much money you make, how much money your business makes, how successful you will be financially. This all impacts it. If I didn't have my personal brand, there's no shot in hell I would have been able to do any of this or even living out where I'm at right now in my life in Scottsdale. None of it would have been possible. So with all this being said, 
My links are below this video. If you want to learn exactly how to build your own personal brand very, very clearly, go to the link in this video. It's all for you. And if you're even more serious and want hands-on action with me one-on-one, -on -one, go to the link below, book a call, and we'll be able to talk directly where I'll be able to help you build your personal brand the best way. Because you can beat all these talking head idiots online that they don't really have any brand lasting power. People know them, they get views, they make money, right? But you probably also make money too. But you don't want to be slaving away being one of these talking head guys forever. You want to build your personal brand, build your business at the same time while attracting your ideal customer profile and build the network that you want, opposed to just kind of being more the lone wolf or just having a couple high level friends. You can see my page. You can go to my Instagram at Frankify. You can see some of the people I'm surrounded by. I want to help you build out your ideal network as well. So book that call below. But for now, don't be motivated. Stay disciplined. And I will see you in the next video.